We can start the lecture. <clears throat> Last week we were talking about uh, the use of derivatives in economies. If you're producing uh, some commodity, there's a cost associated with it. Your cost function is shown with the blue uh, curve. Now, if you're producing uh, X amount of your commodity, and you want to add one to it, then the marginal cost is actually the slope of the tangent line to this curve at x. And it is approximately the extra cost that you can show by that t here uh, of producing one more. So that's how uh, uh, derivatives are used in economics. Oops, now, if you have a cost function like this, suppose that the cost of producing x radius is c of x, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 15x. Dollars for producing eight to thirty radiators. So you have a plant which produces radiators. The capacity of the plant is between eight and thirty radiators. Now, of course, when you produce something, you sell it in the market. Depending on the market situation, you have a revenue function also. So you have an income. So R of X, let's say X cubed by X squared plus 12. Now, currently, the shop is producing, or the plant is producing 10 radiators per day, let's say. Now, what is the marginal cost of producing 11 radiators per day? And what is the marginal revenue? That's an important thing that the investors are interested in. Because you can, uh, if the market uh, situation is okay, you can increase your uh, production and that will cause an increase in your revenue, of course. But the marginal, what is the marginal cost and what is the marginal revenue is important. In order to have an idea about that, you first take the derivative of the cost function with respect to x. So if you do that, that's 3x squared minus 12x plus 15. Now, since you are producing 10 radiators per day right now, you substitute 10 before x, and you get 195,000. Now, that means uh, if you inter uh, produce one unit more, that the cost you are going to have is 195 dollars now let's check the revenue suppose the market is situation is okay and you can sell if you produce more then you uh, you take the derivative of r of x that's c here but so, so that's 3x squared minus 6x plus 12. And if you calculate marginal revenue, that's $252. Now, the investor can decide to increase its product at this point because you have about uh, $57 uh, dollars, uh, more uh, because your cost is $195, your revenue is $252, so you have $57 more earned. And so the investors, uh, depending uh, on the market situation, can decide that it's okay, I should produce more and I will sell more and I will earn more. Okay, that's uh, uh, one of the ways, uh, ways of using uh, derivatives in economy. Okay, there's another example uh, that use of derivatives in bars. According to Mandel law, if the frequency of genes for smooth skin piece is P, 
and that's between zero and one, that's frequency. Then the frequency of G is for wrinkles in P's would be one minus P in the next generation. And so when you write this, uh, Y is equal to two P times one minus P plus P squared. So that's two P minus P squared. Okay, so in the next generation, and uh, that will be uh, the proportion of uh, the smooth skin piece. Now that's a problem, and the derivative is dyd is 2 minus 2p. Now, if the frequency uh, is low, let's say much less than 1 for smooth skin piece, uh, and uh, in the next generation, there will be more skin uh, piece, and uh, that tells us that uh, the gene for smooth skin piece is a dominant gene because even if the frequency is small in one generation, in the next generation it increases uh, a lot. So that's the uh, way of finding uh, dominant. This, this this graphic shows uh, two p minus p squared, which is the frequency of smooth skin genes in the next generation. As you can see, uh, if he is small, it increases. And let's see the derivatives of trigonometric functions. We will use the same definition for the derivative in order to calculate the derivative of uh, trigonometric functions. Let's start with the sine function. We say that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Let's try to prove this using the basic formula for the definition of the derivative. So that formula, f of x plus h minus f of x, divided by h, and you take the limit as h goes to zero. So that's the derivative of sine of x, at point x, of course. Now, if I open this up, that's sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h because it's an uh, addition formula for, for the trigonometric functions, and minus sine x. Now, uh, the sine x can be taken in the same parentheses, so we have sine x times cosine h minus over h here. Now, we know that cosine h minus 1 divided by h, the limit as h goes to 0 is 0. So this term drops out. Now let's look at the other term. You have cosine of x times sine h over h, and you take the limit as h goes to 0. Now here we know that we have proved this using sandwich theorem. Sine h over h, as h goes to 0, as limit 1. So that's zero, and that's equal to one times cosine x, and the result is cosine x. So we use the basically basic formula for the, the definition of the derivative, and you can get the derivative of the sine function easily. Now the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. Uh, let's prove that also, so that will be enough for us prove just two of them, then we can use the rules of derivation to prove the derivatives of other trigonometric functions. So that's cosine x plus h minus cosine h x uh, divided by h and you know, because h goes to zero. If you open this term, that's cosine x cosine h minus sine x sine h. And we have here minus cosine x. So we can uh, use these two cosines here, this one and this one. So it's cos x cosine h minus 1 divided by h minus 
sine x sine h over h. We take the limit as h goes to zero. And this one zero, so this term, I can take cosine x out because it's independent of h. This term is zero, and we know that this term is one. So the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine. Here you show you see cosine x and its derivative uh, sine of x. Actually, by uh, looking at the derivatives of the original function, for instance, at minus pi uh, is equal to minus one. Uh, then pi over this pi ultimate is zero. At zero, it is one. At pi over two, it is uh, zero. And here it's minus one. So you can just uh, uh, draw this as minus sine x. And as you can see, it's consistent uh, with the slopes that you have seen here. Let's continue. Now, uh, that's uh, one of the basic usage of. Uh, Derivative uh, is in simple harmonic motion. This shows simple harmonic motion here. This weight is at rest; it doesn't move up or down. But if you pull it down here to five units down and just leave it, then go and down and up and down. It starts to oscillate. Uh, now. And it's periodic, so the displacement function s is equal to 5 cosine of t. So what happens here is you pull down, downward is positive, uh, then the weight uh, starts to go towards the equilibrium point, which is zero here. However, because of the speed, it passes the equilibrium goes upwards to the negative in the case. Takes an extra one there and goes back to the equilibrium point and then uh, down uh, to this point and it continues like this. Now of course the derivative of displacement is the speed. And the speed v is minus five sine t that's the derivative of cosine of t. So the speed is let's look points where the speed is at maximum. It's always in the rest position. When he, uh, the weight passes the rest position, it has uh, the maximum speed, either negative or positive. Here, uh, that's positive and here negative. Going up actually is negative, and going down is positive in this case. As you can see here, the weight is as the maximum velocity at the rest position and goes up. The velocity here is negative, of course, because it's moving upwards. And after, because of the spring, it's pushed down and uh, the velocity is positive because it's going downwards. This is called simple harmonic motion. That's one of the uh, important uh, motions in the mechanics. Now the amplitude of the motion is five units. So we have C. The period is two pi. Same is true for velocity and acceleration. As we have seen, the velocity is maximum when the object is at its rest position. Acceleration is exactly opposite because when you pull it down and leave it, that's the maximum acceleration. And so, and the jerk is defined as the derivative of the acceleration, that's 5 sine t again. Okay, the, this object will continue in the same way if the losses in the spring is neglected. So if there are no energy losses in the spring, uh, then the 
will continue to oscillate in the same way up to infinity. But in practice, that's not possible because spring loses uh, uh, some, you lose some energy if you open up the spring by going down and pushing up, you lose energy and eventually the weight stops at the rest position, of course. Now let's look at the derivatives of the other three functions. We can use the differentiation rules, for instance, tangent x. Let's look at tangent x, the derivative of tangent x. So the tangent x is sine x over cosine x. We use the quad rule. That's we take the derivative of sine x first and multiply it with cosine x. That gives us cosine square x. Then we say minus the derivative of cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. So you have cosine square plus sine square here and divided by cosine square x. That's equal to 1, so we have second square x. Uh, we take the derivative of cotangent x. You first take the derivative of cosine x, which is sine x. You multiply with sine x, so you have minus sine square. Then minus, you take the derivative of sine x and multiply with cosine x, so that's minus cosine x. Here, this is equal to minus 1, so that's minus cosecant uh, square x you get. Same for uh, second x. You use the quotient rule. Take the derivative of 1, that's 0. So minus the derivative of this, which is sine x. Minus the minus sine x, so that's sine x over cosine x squared is the derivative of second x, which we can write second x tangent x. A similar derivation is possible for cosecant x, derivative cosecant x. So when you take the, uh, this derivative is 0 minus the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x, but you have minus sine over sine x squared. So that's uh, cotangent x, cosecant x, minus cotangent x, cosecant x. So these are the derivatives of the trigonometric function. Once you find the derivative of sine x, cosine x, using the basic formula for the definition of the derivative, and you roll down, you can calculate the derivative uh, of uh, every trigonometric function. Now let's go to the change rule. Uh, let's sort of try to illustrate what we mean by change rule. Uh, you have three gears here, gears here, uh, with different number of teeth. Now if it has x turns, number of teeth here three times more than b here. Uh, so uh, B has U turns, which is actually 3x. Now here there is another gear uh, with twice the teeth of gear B. Now this turn is uh, half. And uh, we have B uh, having U turns. This has Y turns, which is half of U turns. So actually, dy dx. That's the change of the y with respect to this is you have uh, dy du first, uh, which is 1 over 2, and then du dx, uh, which is 3. So y 3x. So that's the basic idea about the chain rule of functions. You want to find the number of terms of C gear uh, with respect to the A gear. And so there's another gear B here. So dy du, you first calculate dy du, which is 1 over 2. Then du dx, which is 3x. So that's 3 over 3x over 2. Okay, so that's the basic uh, idea about. Rule. So 
So uh, that's a composite function, of course. And u is g of x here. Uh, it's just uh, the g in the middle you can imagine like that. So that's g of x, and that's uh, f of x. Now, when you uh, take the derivative of the composite function g, and you take the derivative of f, but you evaluate g of x u. Then you multiply with the u dx, the derivative of g with respect to x, and that gives the derivative of the composite function. Okay, it's like the gears you can uh, imagine like that. So that theorem tells us the chain rule if f of u is differentiable at point u, which is equal to g of x, and g of x is differentiable at x, then the composite function f of g of x is differentiable at x. So you can find the derivative of the composite function at x. And f prime gx, that's u. So you take the derivative of, let's evaluate at u. Then you take the derivative of u with respect to x. And that's a short way of writing the chain rule. Okay. Now there is an application of uh, the chain rule. Of the, of course, suppose we have an object moves along x axis and its position changes according to this x of t cosine times uh, cosine of t squared plus 1. So let x is equal to cosine of u, and u is equal to t squared. So t squared plus 1, sorry. So dx dt is dx du, that's this, du dt. So dx t u is sine times the derivative of u, that is 2t. Okay? And so you can substitute for u sine t squared 1 times 2t. So that's uh, the use of uh, chain rule. Okay, let's differentiate sine x squared plus x with respect to x, of course. Now you first take the derivative of sine function here. So that's cosine derivative that u is here x squared plus x. And the u dx is 2x plus 1. You can repeatedly use this. Okay, let's say derivative of g of t which is equal to tangent of 5 minus sine 2t. Okay, so dg dt. Now you first take the derivative of g, but you take the derivative of tangent first. So that's second square 5 minus sine 2t. Now you, that's u. Now you take the derivative of the inside, which is uh, that's one. So that's minus cosine t because cosine 2t because sine of uh, derivative of sine is a cosine. You have a minus sign here. Minus cosine 2t. That's not uh, enough. You have to take the derivative of 2t also. Uh, so that's 2. So you have a repeated use of chain rule here. So you look at your function uh, always. Uh, remember the chain rule and take the derivative of everything inside. For instance, if you have f of x, which is equal to 5x cubed minus x to the fourth, all the power cell. Now you can, uh, and you want to take the derivative with respect to x. If you call u, that's u to the seven. So seven times u to the six here, you can substitute for. 
Now you take the derivative of u with respect to x, which is 15x squared minus 4. Another example is this. f of x is dx minus 2 to the power minus 1. So we know uh, how to take the powers, uh, derivative of the powers functions. So that's a negative power. I first take the derivative of, let's call this u, u to the minus 1, which is equal to minus u to the minus 2. Okay, now you take the derivative of u, uh, which is just 3. Uh, and so I have minus 3 over 3x minus 2 squared. Okay, these were a couple of examples of uh, the use of chain rule. One last example is this. Now y is equal to sine x in degrees. Well, you can just substitute instead of this sine pi x over 8, uh, 180. Okay, so x is in radians, pi x over 180 degrees. So uh, the degree function is shown in blue line. If you just plot sine x, and it oscillates uh, with 2 pi. Okay, here is the red one, it's the sine x. Uh, but when sine x oscillates a lot here, sine x degree, in terms of degree, just oscillates between this. So the sine x degree oscillates only pi over 8 180 times as often as sine x oscillates. So that's uh, the difference between the two. Let's look at parametric equations. Instead of curve y is equal to f of x, you can Define y as a function of one parameter, x as a function of uh, an, uh, one parameter also. Let's give an example. Suppose x is equal to a cosine t and y is equal to b sine. Okay, what does this curve tell us? Okay, so for and t is between zero and two. So for Every t in this interval, I have an x value, y value. I put those values on my graph. I have a curve here. For every t, I can calculate x and y coordinates. Okay, so if you take the square of this, and the square of this, uh, you know that x over a is cosine t. Uh, y over b is sine t. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to so x over a squared plus y over b squared is equal to 1. So that's an ellipse. If I plot the points t on the x y uh, plane, I will get an ellipse. And this ellipse will move counterclockwise. I mean, the points, my points. Why? Because when t is equal to 0, we have y is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. So uh, you have uh, on the right one. And as t grows, cosine gets smaller and y gets bigger. So that's a counterclockwise turning around the ellipse. Let's get. T and y is equal to t. Now, since y is equal to x squared, this curve is describing a point moving along a parabola because x is equal to square root of t, y, t, y is equal to x squared. That's a parabola, and uh, that shows the object moving along uh, the parabola from 0 to infinity.
line so okay suppose there is a line which starts from minus to one point minus and ends at point three five now how can i parameterize this line yes so it will start uh, at t zero with minus two and y is equal to one t is equal to zero so let's call this a times t and uh, x is equal to minus two times a y is equal to one plus bt okay now this should end at three five okay so how do i get three here uh now let's assume that t changes between zero and one is that so t is at most one so what plus a must be here that must be five in order to get t here so a is equal to five now how about uh, b now I start from one, I want to go to five. So B must be equal to four. So uh, we can write uh, the equation like this. X plus two over A is equal to T, Y minus one over B is equal to T. These are equal. That's the equation of a line, uh, which starts at minus two plus one which ends when t is equal to 1 at 3, 5. Okay, so you can parameterize a line in this way, if you are given two points, of course. Now, how do you calculate the slopes of parametric this is important here. Suppose you are given x is equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t. So there are two functions, but what I want to find, dy dx. Okay, I want to find dy dx because I'm plotting these points on x plane. And what's dy dx is important here. Now, the slope of this curve can be calculated using two rules. Well, dy dt, you first take you assume that y is a function now x dy dx and multiply by dx t. So dy dt is equal to dy dx dx dt. So when you uh, solve for dy dx, that's dy dt divided by dx dt. That directly comes from the chain rule. Of course, here dx dt must be zero, otherwise you cannot calculate. Let's give an example. So we have x is equal to 2t plus t and y is equal to t squared minus 1. Okay, we want to find out what's the value of dy dx at t is equal to 6. Okay. We know that dx dt is equal to, which is a constant, and dy dt is equal to 2t. So dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dy uh, dx dt, which is equal to t. So a t is equal to x minus 3 over 2 you can solve from here. So when it is 6, dy dx uh, at t equal to 6, that's equal to 6. Dy dx is 6 because it's 2t over 2. Now let's look at this example. x is equal to a times cosine t and y is equal to b times sine t. t changes uh, between 0 and 2 pi. That was an ellipse we know. Okay, find the slope of uh, this curve, that's an ellipse, at point a over square root of 2, b over square root. dy dx is equal to dy dt, which is e cosine t, divided by dA, d, uh, uh, dx dt, which is minus a sine t. 
So you have minus b over a cotangent b, e, uh, but that's uh, that's if you uh, take cotangent b, e, that's equal to one. So the drag dx is b minus b over a at e is equal to pi over four. Now the equation for the tangent line is what? You can point slope four now. Y is equal to y sub zero is b over c so minus the slope of the uh, line, which is uh, b of minus b over a, uh, and x minus x sub zero, which is a over square root two. So if you calculate uh, here. Uh, that's a is cancelled out here and plus b over square two and so square root of two times b uh, minus b over a x is the slope of the tangent line here. We just use point slope formula. Let's continue. Now we can take the second derivative of parametric curves also. Okay, so uh, the second derivative, of course, is with respect to x. So what you do is, uh, if you calculate the first derivative, and then you take the derivative of uh, dy prime dx, that's the second derivative. But according to chain rule, dy prime dt divided by dx dt. So yeah. let's demonstrate this in an example. You have x is equal to t minus t squared, y is equal to 3 minus e cube. So if you take, uh, if you want to calculate y dx, that's y. Uh, so that's d or dt is 1 minus 3t squared here, because we have t cube here. Divided by dy dx, that's 1 minus 2t here. So that's uh, y prime. Now I'm going to take the derivative of y prime with respect to x, which means that I'm going to calculate the derivative of this expression with respect to t and divide it by the derivative of x with respect to t. When I take the derivative, I will use the quotient rule. So you first take the derivative of this one, which is minus 60, multiply with the denominator, that's this, minus 60 times 1 minus 2t. Now you take the derivative minus, you take the derivative of the denominator, which is minus 2, so you have plus 2 here, multiply with this. And now you divide, uh, and you get square of that. Uh, dy, dy prime dt. I have to divide this by what? dx dt, which is 1 minus 2. So you divide this uh, by 1 minus 2. You get 1 minus 2t. And if you arrange the terms, you have 60 minus 60 plus 2. Okay, so you can actually calculate uh, the second derivative of the parametric curves also. You first calculate first dy dx, and then in the same way, the first derivative of the first derivative. So that gives you d square y dx squared. Let's solve uh, an application problem uh, here. Suppose a uh, red cross plane is moving at a speed 40 meters per second, and it drops a cargo at 
170 meters directly above our field, the start of the field, it's actually, which is 150 meters. So you have a plane going at speed that's 40 meters per second, uh, directly at the start of the field, directly above 107 meters, it drops a car. The question is whether this cargo will land on the field or will go out of the field. The field has like 250 meters. So the, uh, the cargo has a speed, of course, a speed in the extraction, which is 40 t because it's from a plane going with speed 40 meters per second. So the uh, x is equal to 40 displacement in x by the cargo. Now, displacement in y is 170 minus 4.9t squared. That's the Earth's gravitational pull. So displacement in y is 170 minus 4.9t squared. Now, when y is 0, that is, the cargo drops uh, on the earth, on the other field, or out of field, we don't know. But when y is zero, that happens. Uh, so, uh, you equate this zero, t is equal to 170 divided by 4.9, you get the square. To well, always use the plus square root, because time is positive here. That's approximately 5.89 seconds. And you substitute that here. So t is 40 times 5.89. It's 235.6 meters. So our cargo less on the field, in the field, because the field was 250 meters wrong. So uh, that's 235.6. So at this point from the start, the cargo lands uh, on the field. This is important because the plane is going, the plane was going more fast, faster than maybe the cargo will land on the field. There could be a, a cliff after 250 meters and the cargo will land on it uh, after the cliff. All down. Okay, that was an application problem. Now let's look at implicit differentiation. This was previous was the chain rule. That's an implicit differentiation. Okay. Now sometimes uh, the relation between x and y are given in closed form. Uh, so how do we find dy dx in this case uh, is important for us. Uh, so let's uh, try to do it. What you do basically here, differentiate each term in the equation with respect to x and treat y as a differentiable function of x. And then you will have dy dx term. You collect them on one side of the equation, and the other terms on the other side, and the ratio will give you dy dx. Okay, that's an example. Now we have here y squared is x. That's not a functional relationship. But uh, you, we can, uh, this is a curve, so we can. And, I divide this curve into two parts. Y is equal to square root of y1 is equal to square root of x. Okay, that's the upper plus square. And y2 is equal to minus square root of x. Okay. So here we can continue and take the derivative of this. So the slope of this point is. Uh, if you take the derivative of uh, square root of x, it's 1 over 2 square root of x. That's this. 
for this one. And for this one, if you take the square root of root minus, minus the square root of x, it's minus 1 root 2 square root of x, that is d here. So we can calculate it. But there is another way. So we have an equation here, which is y squared is equal to x. Now, take the derivative of this with respect to x and this with respect to x. So you have, if you take the derivative of this with respect to x, you use the chain rule, so the 2y times dy dx. So you divide, uh, and the derivative of this is equal to 1, so dy dx is 1 over 2y. Here it's square plus square root of, it's minus square root of, say, same. Thing. That's the basis of implicit differentiation. So the alternative is, that's this, 2y dy dx, and then dy dx is 1 over 2y. And you can evaluate the uh, dy dx using this uh, expression. Let's continue. Okay, let's look at this figure. That's sort of similar. You have a circle here. Our semicircle is equal to 25 minus x squared. And the lower uh, semicircle is blue here. And it's minus square root of 25 minus x squared. Now, the formula for this curve is x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, because as you can see, the radius is 5 here. Okay, take the derivative of each term with respect to x. So you have 2x here. Here you have 2y times dy dx using the rule, because we are assuming here that y function. And the derivative of 25 is 0. So dy dx is equal to minus x of y. Because we can just cancel 2 here. You put x here comes at minus x, and you divide by y. Now, if you have a point here, let's say it's 3 minus 4, so x is 3 and y is minus 4, we have minus x over y, so that's minus 3 over minus 4, which is 3 over 4. So that's a positive slope, uh, slope at uh, minus 4. And you can find the derivative of at every point here if you are given a point. Suppose you are, just have the symmetrical point here, you again have a positive curve because in this case, x will be minus 3, y will be equal to 4. Uh, so again, you will have 3, 4. Now, if you have another point here, that will be your uh, negative. Because here is, let's say, again, let's say x is equal to minus 3 and y is equal to 4. So x is equal to minus 3, y is equal to 4. That's, uh, uh, and that, that will give you this uh, negative uh, slope here. And same here, x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4. So that's 3 over 4 uh, minus 3 over 4 is the negative slope. So this is the basis of implicit differentiation. If you had a closed form uh, of relation between x and y like this, it's not a functional relation, you can take the derivative of each term with respect to x, and you will assume that y is a function of x. So you can calculate uh, from this uh, the derivative. OK, there is another function here, which is x cubed plus y minus 9xy. So that's a close form between the relation between y and x. And we want to find uh, the tangent at a certain point. Okay, let's give a break uh, for 10 minutes right now. We will convene at 
uh, technical. <laughs> 